God expresses himself as a trinity. Mm -hmm. And this trinity is composed of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, the Hebrew was always referring to the Trinity or a member of the Trinity is Elohim. Elohim. Mm -hmm. Elohim. This is the name that God uh, represents himself as. Mm -hmm. There's another name, Yahweh, or Y-H-V-H, mm -hmm. which also is translated God. But what we find is that uh, God has, when he created the heavens, he created a hierarchy of intelligences, mm -hmm. angelic beings. Now, these angelic beings have higher and higher degrees of potential. In other words, archangels have a higher degree of potential than angels. Mm -hmm. Then you have other groups of angels, cherubim, seraphim, the highest group in the angelic family are what we call the morning stars or dawn stars. Okay. The star group, as you read the scripture, is the highest advanced group of angels in existence. Now out of this group of stars is an elite group called the morning stars or dawn stars. <clears throat> this group is given administration over the creation after the fall of Lucifer. Okay. When Lucifer fell, he abrogated his responsibility, his position, he fell from it. So this elite group of dawn stars <clears throat> was given the administration over that. Now you read about this in the book of Genesis, mm -hmm. the second chapter. <clears throat> Genesis, the second chapter, because of the shortness of time, we pick up the conclusion of Genesis, the first chapter, which is the creation. Mm -hmm. When you read Genesis, the first chapter, you read Elohim created. Elohim created. Mm -hmm. Elohim bara. The word in Hebrew create is bara, B A R A. Mm -hmm. And all of this in the first chapter are the creation <clears throat> that bara. Bara that Elohim brought into existence. Mm -hmm. In Genesis, the second chapter, it tells you that the creation is finished, is complete. Mm -hmm. In verse 1, <clears throat> we read, Thus mm -hmm. the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. So Elohim has finished his act of creation. Nothing else is going to be created. Elohim rests, Scripture tells us. <clears throat> Verse 2, and on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. <coughs> He's still resting. He's not doing any more acts of creation. Now we have a transition from Elohim finishing the creation to activity taking place within the creation. There's a transition. <coughs> Verse 3, God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God, you see that word Lord God, the word Lord there is Jehovah, <coughs> H V H. We have the introduction now of Jehovah. Everything in the first chapter is Elohim. Mm -hmm. Nowhere do you find the name Jehovah in the first chapter. Mm -hmm. So there's a transition. Now, if Elohim is resting, it means that he's not doing anything. Okay. Jehovah is now the centerpiece of the activity. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, Mr. Richard. Yes. Um, probably, she's probably thinking this, but um, when you say Elohim, well, rested from his creation. Creation means the entire galaxy and the form of the earth, right? Everything. Everything, right? Everything. Just to extend <clears throat> that point, when he says, and in the chapter 2, verse 1, 
and all the host of them, are we to understand that to mean all the angelic beings within the three heavens? Everything. The whole creation is now complete. The first creation was spoken into the existence. All right. Now this is talking about the physical creation. Okay. Is now finished. Coming back to verse four, mm -hmm. where we see the first introduction of YHVH. Mm -hmm. At that point, at that specific point, mm -hmm. had the angels fallen, or that hadn't happened yet. Oh, long ago. That's why he had the creation. Okay. Because Lucifer wrecked the physical creation. And so, Elohim steps in and restores it. So we're really talking about remaking It's a recreation, re yes. Mm. Why is that not expressed in that manner anywhere in the Bible? Well, it is. <clears throat> but you have to read into it. Because he tells man in Genesis, the first chapter, replenish the earth. Mm. So it's talking about <clears throat> make it back Again. to the state yeah. in which it yes. once was. Okay, let, let me add a little something in there. See, and, and the transition is through Genesis 1 1, Genesis 1 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1 2, and the earth was without form and void. So, what did he do? He, did he create without form and void? No, it became without form and void because of the Luciferian reign, and, he, and the Lucifer was now banished. Out of, out of that responsibility, it was given now back to the Lord God, or given to the Lord God, to now re-establish a clarity, settle things down. There, there was a water course that he had to calm down, because all the planets that were created had water going to them. So, the Lord God does this. It's not Elohim that does it. Because he had completed all his work, but between Genesis 1 1 and 1 2 was the Luciferian reign, which was thousands of years. But you study to see well, how is this even possible? Genesis 1 1 it says he created the earth, Genesis 1 2 it says it is without form and void. So, what did he do? Did he create a mess? No, it became a mess, but by studying, you start, you start seeing the reality of the Luciferian reign. And mm -hmm. that's what Jonesy's bringing out. Okay. In that um, time of the, um, oh man, come on, Jim, you know the word, uh, the animals uh, before mm -hmm. uh, in the Luciferian thing, uh, what is the, those huge animals? Dinosaurs. Huh? Dinosaurs. 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 Is that yeah. why they find dinosaur bodies? Okay. Lucifer <coughs> re-engineered the pattern that God had made for all the animal life. Not only on this planet, but all the other planets. What he did was he introduced things into the creation that Elohim never permitted. That is, ferocity, uh, animosity. He caused... Uh, designed to make animals uh, basic, basically antagonistic to each other. That's why you find meat eaters and plant eaters. And they can see the tremendous conflicts, fights that they would have in the prehistoric time. Well, Lucifer engineered that. God never did. Everything that Elohim did ate grass. Hmm. But Lucifer introduced the carnivorous nature, the wild nature. Mm. of these creatures so that he could take dominion, domain over the creation. Mm. Can I just ask? Sure. Was the earth peopled by angelic beings mm -hmm. prior to man ever existing? Oh, sure. Yes. How long did that last for? Well, it's still going on. Okay, a better question would be before YHVH was tasked to repeople the earth, mm -hmm. how long had Luciferian beings inhabited the earth? Since its beginning. How long? Nobody knows. Can you guess? The time, the time element is not the same time that we have today. Right. What would you guess? I'm I'd say right. probably in the vicinity of uh, hundreds of thousands of years is what we would consider to be time. Okay. Quite some time because it took a, a, it took a time for Lucifer to reach his full potential. Hmm. And then he ruled for a certain time. It would take time for him to engineer 
the transition to his own authority from Elohim's authority. Elohim allowed all this to take place until Lucifer reached the point where he wanted to ascend into heaven and continue to exert his authority beyond the physical realm. Now, what YHVH did when he received the authority over the creation, he worked hand in hand with Elohim. He had to work off the pattern that Elohim established. And this place was such wreckage. When you read Genesis, the first chapter, it talks about the Spirit of God <coughs> came down and hovered over the waters. That's Ruach Elohim. That's Elohim. Had to calm this thing because everything was in a state of chaos. And when he calmed it, he brought it into a state of control in which things could begin to progress. And then he began his act of recreation. God recreates in the spiritual realm. Uh, YHVH does his activity in the physical realm. Right. That's why you get chapter 2 where it talks about there's no, there's no act of creation. Everything done in chapter 2 is an act of physical labor, physical manifestation. He plants. He brings <laughs> things through in a physical manifestation. Jehovah. And, yeah, Jehovah. What about there's a part in the Bible that talks about uh, I believe it's Angels taking over because they they saw the women and they, they oh, were. Oh yeah, you're talking giants. about the giants. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the giants, yes. The Fallon. And the, well, what happened there? But uh, uh, what area are they are? They in um, Luciferian? No, uh, no. no yeah. What we call the Adamic era. Okay, Adamic. Era. That was after the, the the bringing forth of Adam onto yeah. the, okay. the earth. Okay. That's uh, what I really want to know. Yeah. Now, to me, that's so mismatched. We could have to do a lesson on that by itself. Because, uh, it has to do with corrupting the line of Adam so that the line would not enable Christ to come through. Mm -hmm. That was the sole purpose of that. And the Nephilim basically are angels, but they didn't co-inhabit with human women. The ones that co-inhabited with human women were the descendants of Cain. Yeah. The giants engineered it so that the line the, that would lead to Christ would become corrupted. Maybe we'll do a lesson on that okay. in the near future. Anyway, what we want to do here is establish the transition so that you get an idea. Elohim is a creator. He creates, he creates in one of two ways. He speaks things into being or he constructs things. <clears throat> when he speaks things into being, they become eternal because his word is eternal. It cannot end. It cannot transition. It cannot be changed. But what he spoke into being were the heavens. When you read Genesis, the first chapter, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens. They were spoken into existence. With the angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, dawn stars, everything what that they contained came into existence instantaneously. And then it goes on to say, and the earth. The word earth there comes from a Hebrew term, eretz, which means that which is firm. It's talking about matter, material things. Now this matter, this earth, is not the dense matter that we live in. It's a refined matter. It's a matter that is spiritual, but it's still matter. It's, if, you, if you take a look at the changes that take place between a solid, a liquid, and a gas. They're all matter. Mm -hmm. But the gas is more refined. The liquid is more refined, and the solid is less refined. Everything has a state of existence. Mm -hmm. But it's still matter. Ice can be solid, mm -hmm. it can be liquid, or it can be gas. Mm -hmm. So what you're looking at what took place, matter first came into being in, if you want to talk about it, in a nebulous state, a gaseous state. And then it transis, transin, transcended into what we see today, the physical, dense, coarse matter. That's why you can't see uh, matter in its true state. It talks about the foundations of the earth. It talks about the things that the earth contains. They exist in a refined state which man's senses cannot detect. If you're in the spiritual realm, you can detect them, you can see them. So having said that, 
what we find, Elohim gives YHVH authority to operate in the physical, to administer it, and to maintain it. YHVH has assistance, attendance, lower angelic beings that he has in his, under his authority. And those are the ones that construct it, right? Yeah, well, yes, those are the sons of God. And uh, <coughs> Lucifer comes out of that group. He was the head of the sons of God group, if you will. Hmm. Again, we'd have to do a lesson clarifying all that because there's so much. But the Bible gives us a whole cosmology of events that took place. What we'll do as uh, we go along in our scripture studies, if you have questions, write them down try to address them, to address them. We want to, is that clarifying any, to any degree, any of your question? Yes. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. the, is it abbreviated for something, though? Um, YHVH, mm -hmm. yes, because the orig original word was lost. The name was lost. Mm -hmm. They only have a part of the name. So that's why they would use the letters, YHVH. In the original text, right? Yeah. The rabbis did that purposely because they didn't want the name of God to be spoken. Because they felt, if you know a person's name, it means you have familiarity with them. And if you read the Levitical laws that took place, man was always separate from God. He couldn't come into God's presence, let alone mention his name. It was too high. Was, Unless, uh, was this also an attempt to stop men going directly to God. In other words, creating a job for the scribes and the Pharisees. No, they didn't have to do that because God already gave them exclusive um, <clears throat> uh, representation. They were, the priests were to be the go-betweens between God and man. Uh, so they always had authority. Even the kings couldn't do what the priests could do. And a lot of them got in trouble because they tried. <clears throat> no, it was that they began to do things traditionally away from the spiritual uh, reasoning behind the Word of God. They began to add tradition to what had been given them originally. And by the time of Jesus, the, the, the tradition had totally neutralized the effect of the Word of God. And they were just going through the motions. Jesus said, basically, you, you have nullified the word of God through your traditions. He called it the Jews' religion. He didn't even acquiesce to the validity of what they were doing. All he acquiesced to was the temple and the true state of what God had given in the, <clears throat> the scrolls that the prophets had that was housed in the temple. And as far as all the... The accoutrements that went beyond that, Jesus didn't recognize it. They consistently got into uh, conflicts with them because he wouldn't follow their traditions. He said, well, they would tell him, you didn't wash your hands before you mm -hmm. did this, or you didn't uh, put on the prayer shawl in the right way, you know, you know this, that, and the other. And uh, Jesus didn't even pay it any mind. He just went on and served God. Anyway, does that answer any of your, your questions? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Another one she had real quick was um, uh -huh. the where did Elohim come from? The name oh, like yeah. was a man man gave that name to no that's represent. God's pronunciation of his name. He gave it to man. He said, "My name is Elohim." When he gave man the language, the name came with the language. He gave man his name, Adam, Adam which in the Hebrew today means red. Hmm. Uh, if you say the Hadag uh, Adom, the red fish. So Adam was an individual who was ruddy, and he had a reddish complexion. He was taken from the soil, which was a doma. Um, God's name, Elohim. 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 Mm -hmm. So, when you say that Elohim is, you can describe him, because I know it's God, mm -hmm. um, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm 
Elohim, you can say, you can refer him as Jesus. Sure. Elohim will be God. Yes, Elohim. God the Father is called Elohim. God the Son is called Elohim. Mm -hmm. And God the Holy Spirit is called Elohim. Mm -hmm. So the, each member of the Trinity is, na is named Elohim. Let, yeah, me add, let me add something, Josie. Okay. See, us having a name for God is a an attempt to have a personal relationship with God. Okay, so we want to call him something. Mm -hmm. But it's a human concept to do that. God... Is the way Jonesy's taught me, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to tell you, and you guys are all going to hear it again over and over and over. God is a reality personified, and he's bringing us to that understanding. He doesn't, the personal nomenclature, you know, Elohim, is not as important as you understanding that he is a reality personified. He is meaning I am that I am. So he's just saying, I exist. There is no other like me. I am is my name. That's literally his name is I am because that's what he is. He's a reality personified. Elohim is for us. Elohim is a plural word because there's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So it helps us give get a concept of who God is by having the three in one by the nomenclature Elohim. But that is just to comfort us. What's most important is that you understand I am that I am. That's who God is. God is a state of existence. Not a <coughs> when you notice the scripture talks about we're in him, in him, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. Everything that's a characteristic of God is a state of existence. We here experience it as a feeling. Love, you feel something inside. But in eternity, love is a state of existence that you enter into and you remain in. Peace, joy, all these are states of existence. Which are characteristic, they come from God, they manifest from God, and they are realities to be experienced eternally. I know it's kind of um, deep here in getting some of these concepts, and I wish we could have more time to go into that. Uh, I hope you're getting this on tape, Jimmy. Yeah, I, I am. Okay. I want you to study what we've talked about tonight. Mm -hmm. You have to make it your own. Okay. And God is a spiritual being. We can't see him like us. Mm -hmm. He is spiritual. And totally. Okay, we're going to go into a lesson now. And some of this may dovetail with what we've been talking about. If... Uh, <clears throat> You are uh, <coughs> uh, basically prone to look at it from that perspective. <coughs> the heavens. Jimmy Dillon, would you ask the Lord's blessing? Lord, we're so thankful to be here to study your word, to learn more about you and what it is you have for us, Lord that the things you want us to do and be in your name. So we ask you to bless this group tonight. We ask you to bless Richard as he brings these insights to us that we would find nowhere else. Uh, so just bless us all this evening, and thank you for watching over us, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, we want to take a look at some principles dealing with the heavens. First principle, the scripture teaches Adamic man, that is the human race, 
as you know, is composed of three elements, body, soul, and spirit. Scripture teaches that man's soul is composed of the earth element. There's four elements, fire, air, earth, and water. Man's soul is composed of earth, as is his body. Turn to the book of Psalms 139, verse 15. Psalms 139, verse 15. Actually, we're going to read verses 14 and 15. Okay, I can change 14 from 15. Easy. Okay, 14 and 15 gives a little more clarification. Okay. Some numbers are harder to change. Okay, one, three, six, seven. Wait a minute, that's 20, 30, 46, not too far, 139, 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. Now here we see an interesting principle. David was able to glean you, revelation knowledge through God's word, and also through his memory. Verse 14, he says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully, wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul, my soul, my soul knoweth right well. So what he's telling us here is memory is a component of your soul. Everything you have ever experienced is locked in your memory, which is resident in your soul. You can take your memory far back as you want to. It just takes a certain amount of practice. David did this all to the ultimate, to his very beginning. That my soul knoweth right well. My substance... What does he mean that the thing he's composed of? The thing his soul is composed of. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Why has he said the lowest parts of the earth? What, what's the, the reference here? Well, that's where his soul comes from. His soul or Everybody's Adamic soul? soul. The whole human race is created in the heart of the earth. Remember, man is composed of three things, body, soul, and spirit. The body comes from the top soil. Your soul was composed of matter, material, earth, in the subterranean regions of the earth. Interesting. So far, I've understood from the world that man is composed from dust. And I understood that to mean that the three parts, the triune parts, all came from the dust. So, so the idea that the soul comes from a different part of the, of the earth is a completely new concept. Your Does body else? and your soul have two separate origins. Hmm. How could your soul come from the dust when your soul is immaterial? I don't know. My question is, when were you going to tell me that? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent question. David gets this from memory. He mm -hmm. remembers how he came into being. That's what it goes on to say. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. That is why when you read the Old Covenant, the Old Testament stories, at death everybody went into the interior of the earth because that's where they came from. The only difference was righteous souls went into paradise, unrighteous went into the torment regions. But everybody went back 
into the interior of the earth. So paradise is in the interior of the earth. Oh, oh yes. Interesting. Yes, okay. So that that was where Lazarus was right. in that the part of the earth when he was they went back to where the human race was originally created, the interior of the earth. So let me bring something up. I know it's a little bit deep, but I, I, I'm curious. We insist. So we have your body, soul, and your spirit. Okay? And as you're saying that man is made from the erits. Okay? So now the, the body from the dust, we only understand that because it's a spiritual, it's non-spiritual, it's a physical. So now this, the soul is still also made from Eretz, but it's non-physical. It's a spiritual element. So I'm, I'm bringing this out so that we all start to gather what's being Remember said. Remember the ice cube. Yes. Gas, liquid, solid. solid. It's still matter. Yeah. But it's a different density. Yeah. Now, since you you thanks very much for that uh, helps clarify things. Since you've specified three parts, where is the mind made from? Soul. Oh, of course, because you just said memory is a component of the soul. So the mind is a subset of the soul. Your talents are subsets of the soul. What makes you you? Your soul is you. Okay. Your so personality, just... see, your unique individuality, everything that goes into making you you is a is endemic. Soul. So that would really be two parts, body and soul. Yes. Okay. So is the spirit and the soul from the same substance? No. Or? Spirit comes from Elohim. Goes back to Elohim. Spirit is what gives you the components that <clears throat> enables the component to function. When YHVH breathed into Adam the breath of life, the word breath there, Ruach, spirit, Adam became a sentient being, became human. But the soul was already existent before Elohim did what he did to bring about the, 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 the triunity. I mean, in other words, Elohim is the creator of the human race. Elohim, uh, excuse me, YHVH is the creator of the human race. Elohim is the creator of the spiritual part of man. Gotcha. With the eternal part of me. Well, let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture teaches, as such, he cannot enter into the heavens because they are composed of a different substance. Man is confined to the matrix of the earth. Now, the earth, earth is not a planet. Earth is a matrix. It is a component of system all composed of matter, density levels of matter. You have things taking place <clears throat> in an earth which is invisible, things taking place in regions called earth which are in the subterranean, things taking place in regions above the earth still called earth. Earth is a matrix. We are in the dense part of it, in the basement part of it, actually, where, um, <clears throat> because of what YHVH did, uh, we're in the most limited portion of it. Now, when you say because of what you did, yeah. what do you mean? We brought man's immaterial into the physical. Right. But in so doing, you're saying that we couldn't, because of that, we couldn't um, live in any other realm, let me use that word, or any other plane well, within the earth. Well, man, man is capable of existing in different density levels of the earth only if he's righteous. Hmm. That's why at death, the unrighteous go to one place, the torment regions of eternity. <clears throat> it's also why the righteous we go back to what's called Abraham's bosom in other regions. And even unsaved people can go into the astral realm. The astral realm is higher levels of the physical. Your soul, once it leaves the body, leaves the density, the dense level, 
and it's capable of existing in the higher levels, but it can't go beyond anything. It, it, it's confined <coughs> to the earth. It can't go beyond earth substance. Mm. Let's go on. That's why unsaved man, unregenerate man, and even and, and even righteous man cannot enter into heaven. We're going to see why. Scripture teaches, as such, she cannot enter into the heavens because they are composed of a different substance. Turn to 1 Corinthians 15th chapter, verse 50. 1 Corinthians 15th chapter, verse 50. Just wish we had a little more time. I know you got a lot of questions. <laughs> Corinthians 15th chapter verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So what he's saying, when Adam was brought forth, he could not ascend into heaven, even though he wasn't corrupted because he was flesh and blood. Jesus says the same thing. Turn to the Gospel of John, 3rd chapter, verses 1 to chapter, verse 1 to 5. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, <coughs> for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The word see there means to discern. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Anything made of earth cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Or, as Matthew says, the kingdom of the heavens. Now, drop down to... We're going to read verses 11 to 13. Same chapter, right? Same chapter. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know. So Jesus is saying, I'm telling you what I know, what I've seen. Testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. So this puts to the trash bin, the book of Enoch that everybody is consistently trying to refer to. Enoch never went to heaven. He couldn't. Mm -hmm. They say, well, the scripture tells us that Elijah went up to heaven and, and that uh, Enoch was translated. Yeah, they went into the earth matrix. They never went beyond the physical, the material makeup. They couldn't because they're composed of earth. Mm -hmm. The only way that you can transcend out of the earth matrix is to be born again. Regenerate. 
Turn to Colossians, first chapter. Verse 12, when you get there. Everyone there? Yes. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet by the born-again experience, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Heaven's element is composed of light. You are recreated to be a being of light. The element that you're composed of through the new birth is light. The scripture consistently gives us that understanding. Turn to 1 John, 1st chapter, verse 5. 1 John, 1st chapter, verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. That's why he's called the Father of lights. We are sons of light. That's the element that we have been recreated into. You are all, if you could see your inner being, the new birth, you would be looking at light. You're taken out of the element of matter, and recreated in the element of light. You say, why? Because you're fashioned after the sun who has created all things and is the creator of all things and he is composed of light. Important for us to understand this, that we're light beings. Now, turn to 2 Corinthians, 5th chapter, verse 17. Any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, people look at that and they look at it from a human perspective. They look at it from a state of perfecting the old. Oh, now I'm a new creation. Now, uh, all the things that I was trying to do before, I can do to a state of perfection now. No, it's saying that everything you were before, everything that existed before is now dead. The, 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 the death knell fell on you and all that stuff is done away with. You are now a being of light created for a reality in which you could never dream of entering into before. <clears throat> You have things waiting for you, an inheritance in 
the heavens in the realms of light. In 2 Corinthians 5th chapter, read verses 1 to 2. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, he's talking about your body, the corrupted physical, or 2 Corinthians 5th chapter, verse 1 to 2, for we know if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, We have a building of God and house, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Your house is your celestial body, a light body. For in this we groan, earnestly desire to be clothed upon with a house which is from heaven. Now what is he talking about here? Well, you've been reborn, you've been re recreated on the inside. On the outside, you're still the same carnal, corrupted body that you were before. So when you die, that corrupted body goes back to the earth. Your soul, which is now created in light, goes to the place in which it was designed to function, designed to inhabit. At the rapture, the corrupted body will come forth in glory because it will have experienced the change. It will be a body of light which you will inhabit. God gives everything a body. Uh, Turn to 1 Corinthians 15. When you get there, verse 40. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, the glory of the terrestrial is another. You've been recreated, a being of light. You have a commensurate light body waiting for you at the place in which you were to inhabit when you leave this place. The body is custom designed for your soul. And you will inhabit it. And you will be able to function in the heavens until the time if each one of us is deemed worthy to come back with the Lord and receive a glorified body. Mm -hmm. Only a percentage of those saints that leave this world will qualify for that. Most of them will stay in their estates in their celestial bodies. Does this celestial body look anything like our physical bodies? Mm -hmm. So it's a light form of the shape of our physical bodies. Mm -hmm. But the glorified body, what does that look like? Just like you. Wow. In a glorified state. Am I going to lose that 25 pounds? I <laughs> you don't have to worry about losing it. Mm -hmm. You're just where you need to be. What is the glorified, what substance is glorified made of? Light. So what's the difference between the light body and the glorified body? Degree of capacity. For? Degree of uh, superiority. As in position, positional superiority. As in power. In other words, the glorified body can go any place. The celestial body can only remain in a certain place in the heavens. Compens uh, depending upon the degree of spiritual maturity you attain to when you leave this place. Remember what we said before, the heavens are stratified. Mm -hmm. 
Some celestial bodies can go to different density levels, others can't, depending upon the degree of maturity. Glorified body can go anywhere. There's a scripture that talks about the two different illuminations hmm. of individuals. Um, What's the scripture, John? Jonesy, I'll tell give you. it to you in a little while. I'm okay. going to get to it. Okay. He's talking about Daniel. Excellent. Oh, cool. See the big thing. Okay, so we find you are beings of light, and as such, you are instructed to realize that your outer body is not regenerate, your inner is. And you are responsible for maintaining the light emanation that's been brought forth by living a life in which you participate in light not in darkness, because if you participate in darkness, the light that's within you begins to diminish. Turn to 1 John, 1 chapter, verse 5 to 7. John 1st chapter 5 to 7 this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not the truth in other words the individual that strays from the path of the father has him on is diminishing his light as well as his relationship with the father Let's continue. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So this is talking about God has made provision. Because we're in this physical environment, because we are limited in this physical body, we're going to do things. Well, God has made provision for that. As long as you're walking in the light, you make a mistake, you stumble or fall, the blood immediately takes care of it. Praise the Lord. Immediately. If you stray from the path, that means you're going to get involved in a habit, habit of sin. Then you're in darkness. That's when Jesus becomes your paraclete stand in until you repent and you receive forgiveness for that and then you have to go back to the path and continue walking but as long as you're on the path <clears throat> the things that take place you don't have to be concerned about God's made provision for all things Paul talks about that Now, Scripture teaches, in the millennium and in the eternal state, all things, all life is going to be regulated by light. Because the light from the Lord, the light from the saints, and the light from the creation is going to regulate life on earth in the millennium, and in the eternal state. Turn to Isaiah, 30th chapter, verse 26. Is that Isaiah? Isaiah 30, 30, verse 26. 26. What we're experiencing now is a descent into darkness. The Luciferians are being allowed to manifest their presence in their darkness in a greater and greater way. Mm -hmm. That's why people are entering into aberrant behavior and things are taking place. At the second coming, 
light is going to dispel the darkness and light is going to be the element which will bathe this whole physical creation. Isaiah 30 verse 26 Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold, as the light of seven days, in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people, and healeth the stroke of their womb. So the moon will be seven times bright as it is. It will be as bright as the sun currently is. The sun will be seven times as bright as it currently is. And what's going to light all this up? What I call the great central sun. Turn to Malachi, fourth chapter. That's just before Matthew. <clears throat> God created a great central sun, which will be seen in the millennial period, and will affect the earth and everything on it to a radical degree. Malachi, 4th chapter, verses 1 to 3. Everyone there? For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. In other words, light is going to become so intense, it will become a fire to those that are in darkness and literally consume them, burn them off the planet. But unto you that fear my name shall the sun, not S-U-N, but S, not S-O-N, but S-U-N, son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. He shall go forth and grow up his calves of the stall. You shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. The light is going to be so intense that no wickedness is going to be able to survive. No darkness is going to be able to survive. What is it that causes this great intensity to light? This S-U-N, this great central sun that will hit our sun and cause it to shine seven times as bright as it is and the moon to shine as bright as the sun currently is. Light is going to illuminate, enter into this region and illuminate all things. All life will be affected by it. That will be the state of the creation. Now the state of the Lord turn to Isaiah 40 verse point, light is illuminating everything, and in the glory of the Lord outshines the light of the creation. Verse 5, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. So when the Lord's glory is revealed, everybody on the planet is going to see it at the same time, simultaneously. Turn to Matthew, 24th chapter.
verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. They're going to see his glory from east to west simultaneously, from one end of the earth to the other simultaneously. Now the saints also will affect life on earth by their glory. There are going to be degrees of glory, light. The saints will emanate, and it's commensurate with the life you have lived here on earth this time. Turn to Daniel 12th chapter. What chapter? Daniel 12th chapter. 12. Okay. Verses 1 to 3. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. And at that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Now when Michael stands up, there's going to be a tremendous celestial war that's going to rend the heavens uh, between angels. <clears throat> and it will spiral down to the earth causing calamities, upheavals, tremendous conflagrations that will spin the earth off its axis out into space, and other things are going to happen. We could do a lesson on that maybe sometime in the future. Verse 2. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is speaking about the resurrection. And they that be wise, they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So it's talking about the glory of the saints that will manifest at the time of the glory of the Lord, at the time of the glory of the creation. <clears throat> Those that be wise, the word wise here is prudent. Those that have taken this word and used it to the max will have a light that rivals the light of the Great island universes out there, the galaxies. Yes. Are those that are wise above those that turn many to righteousness? Can a person be both of those? Sure. Huh? So, is this a celestial body? Or is this a glorified body? Glorified body. It's talking here about, when it says those that be wise, it's talking about those that have pursued godly wisdom to its max. Notice what it says about the wise. Drop down to verse 8, down to verse 10. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? He said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. This wasn't for Daniel. It was for us. Notice what he goes on to say. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Turn to Matthew 25. We're going to close with this. Matthew 25, verse 6. Down to verse 12. 12, ten virgins, five are wise, 
by far foolish. Verse 6, And at midnight it was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all these virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. But go you other to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready, they that were ready, why were they ready? Because they were wise. <laughs> went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. The word there is, we don't have a relationship. The wise are going to have a glory that rivals the galaxies because they used godly wisdom. At a time where others didn't have time or weren't interested or had better things to do. Now, hey there. Now, what we find <clears throat> light is going to be the element that dominates all things. We have a leg up on that here now. We are beings of light. We have an opportunity to take advantage of this before the uh, opportunity passes by. <clears throat> the scripture teaches basically that as we pursue the things of light and we yield to the dominion the superiority of light that's in us, our light becomes brighter and brighter and brighter until it dominates our life. And as such, as it dominates your life, then you reach a point, reach a point where you're dead totally by light. Mm -hmm. You don't enter into the things of darkness because you don't have an interest in that. You shun that. And you become greater and greater of an influence of light in the things you're doing, in the places that you're going, and the occupation that you are engaged in. All this becomes light, manifests as light. As this world gets darker and darker and darker, you're going to stand out more and more and more. And you become what the scripture talks about as being <clears throat> the restrainer. You're going to hold back darkness. Darkness will not be allowed to reach its fullness until you're taken out of the way. Mm -hmm. So this is what we need to strive for at this point. The Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us into greater and greater areas of light as we allow Him to. And it means the determination that you have to put down the desires of the flesh. And that necessarily is not easy. It means a willingness to sacrifice so that your light becomes greater and greater and greater. To endure things that aren't pleasant. But although you may be called upon to sacrifice the physical, it means that the spiritual is going to benefit from it in a greater 